All right, we're live. Hey, you guys, this is National Sales Director Leah Lachlan, and welcome to our virtual pink boot camp. This is session one of four that we are going to walk you through some training, which will cover your pink boot camp training as a new consultant. And so the four sessions we've designed, this being the first one, what they're gonna do is just lay a really good foundation of training and knowledge that you need to be successful in your Mary Kay business. But you won't master the skills in these four sessions, okay? You won't master the skills until you actually go out and practice them and use them. So the goal in this pink boot camp, this virtual pink boot camp, is to give you the information and give you the knowledge and lay a good solid foundation for what you need to know but then the next step is for you to go put it into practice and to try it and to use it. Mastery of these skills only comes from application of them, not from just gaining more knowledge. You, you need to go apply them because in Mary Kay, we, we learn out in the field and we learn from doing, okay? So we're gonna give you the information and then next step is for you to put it into practice. And so we've got a workbook that is gonna follow along with these four sessions. And there are just resources and information and scripts and wording and visuals that are going to support you in, in really retaining the information and uh, the, the knowledge that we're going to give to you in these sessions. And so that can be printed at the pink, uh, on the pink boot camp page at leahlachlan.com. You can print that and follow along. And so we'll be covering session one, which is on booking. Okay, so... There, there are really four main skills in Mary Kay, booking, coaching, selling, and recruiting. Those are the four main skills, and, and thank goodness this is a skills-based business, and that is good news because anyone can learn a skill. So regardless of how much natural talent or skill or ability you think you have or don't have, no worries because these are skills that you can learn too, even if you know very little about sales or cosmetics at this, at this moment. Um, but everything starts with booking, and that's what we're going to start with today. We're going to cover booking, and then the two sort of, um, I guess, sub-skills of booking are coaching what you book, and then pre-profiling the guests, and coaching and pre-profiling help your needs to be really strong. Okay, so we're going to start with booking, and I always like to start with talking about the mindset because you can learn to read the scripts and you can learn to say the words. That's the easy part. Sometimes the more challenging part is, is your mindset um, and the emotion connected to, to what you're going to be doing in your business. Um, I believe, and I've always heard that, that 90% of Mary Kay is, is just your head and your heart and your emotions. 10% is skill. So yes, you need some skills, and we're gonna cover that in this video, but a lot of your success in Mary Kay has to do with your mindset. So let's start there. Um, so I'll just share with you, I'll just tell you a story to help illustrate this point of how valuable your mindset is. So when I started Mary Kay, I really just had this, this like kind of weird stigma about people booking parties, thinking that they wouldn't really want to or you know, if I called, it would kind of annoy them that I would ask them to book a party. Um, I just really didn't have a very positive or enthusiastic mindset about what I was calling and asking people to do when I was calling to book parties, okay? And my results reflected that in the beginning. Um, I just felt like I was bugging people and annoying them, and it felt like I was just trying to get something versus having something to offer and wanting to give something. Okay, so I had two main turning points that helped me with that mindset. And my first turning point was just in my first month of Mary Kay, I held about five parties, if I remember right. And I went to all those first friends. Some went really well and some didn't go so well. I'll save those funny stories for another training session. Uh, some I sold a lot of product and some I didn't sell very much. So I had a, a variety of results with my first five parties. But regardless of what happened at the party, every woman who was there like sincerely had fun and enjoyed it and sincerely liked the product. Now, not everyone could buy a lot. Not everyone booked a party. 
but I just noticed every woman like really enjoying herself and having fun and liking what I had to offer. And as I was packing up my bags and leaving, you know, these parties that I went to my first month, everyone was saying, you know, thank you for coming. I'm so glad we got to do this. I loved the products. Like everyone was just really enthusiastic. And after that happened multiple times at those first five or so parties that I held, that I really had a mental shift. And it dawned on me that I had a service to offer other women. I, I had something to offer. And it wasn't about what I wanted to get. It was about what I wanted to go and give. And that, that mindset alone just gave me so much excitement and, and enthusiasm about what I was doing because it no longer felt like I was annoying people or bugging them or talking them into something they didn't even really want to do anyways. I was like, oh, I've got this, I've got this great thing I want to give you and I want to offer it to you and you're going to like it and we're going to have fun and um, we're going to build a relationship and I want to be a part of your life. And so that, that mindset, you guys, was so, so powerful. And so I wanted to share that with you right now, that if you're worried about booking or nervous to call your friends and family, that's normal and that's okay. But just know that you, you truly do have something to offer. First of all, it's, it's a quality product at a reasonable price, and they get to try it for free. And so you've got that to offer. Um, you've got a positive, fun, warm environment of, of women and just connecting and girlfriends getting together to just relax and have a fun night in. So you have that to offer and women want that and they like that. And then you have your service as their consultant. You have that to offer. And so you're going to help her pick out the best products for her. You're gonna help her to feel beautiful and help her to feel important and special and build a relationship with her and be able to service her as your consultant for years and years to come. Now that I've been uh, in this for 10 years, you guys, I still have customers I first met 10 years ago who are still a part of my life and not just as like me giving them products that they're ordering, but as like a friend and I've done their daughter's makeup for their wedding and have been a part of that special day with them. And I've walked through life with them through different seasons and, and they're my friends and, and I value them and they value me. And so that's, that's something that you have to offer. Okay. So that's the first main like mindset point that I wanted to make is that you have a gift to offer to women. I had another turning point and this was early on in my business that I got this idea to get 100 no's in one month. So to get 100 people to say no to me. And this was early enough in my business that I was still, still uh, hesitant to get on the phone. Now at this point I realized I had something to offer, but I still had this like weird nervousness with making booking calls. And so um, I, I heard this idea, this was someone else's idea, that to try to get 100 no's in a month. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. I'm going to do that. And I don't know why I mentally latched on to that idea, but I was just really excited about it. And so I got, I just printed this, like, stupid, simple um, grid of 100 little boxes in it. And I kept that with me when I would make booking calls. And I would check things off as I got no's. And it was almost like reverse psychology for me that when I called and got a no, before this little 100 no's tracking sheet, I would feel just sort of dumb and kind of feel a sense of rejection and um, feel a little bit defeated, like I wasn't moving forward on the goals. But then when I had this tracking sheet and I got a no, I would hang up and I was like, yes. And I would check off the box. Cause I got another no. Um, and it felt like I, I don't know, I had a sense of accomplishment and like I was progressing and that it wasn't something bad that just happened, but it was just a part of the process. And that's exactly what no's are. They're just a part of the process. And so I would check it off and I would pick up and I, call, I would call the next person. And so that month I got 67 no's that month, the most rejection I had ever received in my life. But that was also the month that I went on target for my car and my team and I did over $11,000 in production. I earned my highest commission check up until that point that month. And then a couple months later earned my car. And then a couple months after that became the sales director. So it was a major turning point month for me. And I'll, I'll tell you what it helped me to do. Really just kept me asking. 
that's what it did. It kept me asking and it kept me calling versus before I would get sort of defeated and I would kind of give up. But this time I just kept calling. And, and, and really I think I kept calling with a more positive mindset because it felt like I was progressing. And when you do the thing you're afraid of over and over and over again, that fear loses its grip on you. Okay, and that's the only way to push fear out of the picture is just to do that thing you're afraid of. And then fear no longer has that power over you. And what used to seem scary and uncomfortable and something I dreaded doing became normal. It became normal because I practiced it so many times. And when you do that thing over and over again, the fear just dissipates and it no longer has that hold on you. And I remember having that experience uh, because before I would think like, oh my goodness, is this, is this fear or awkward feeling ever going to go away? And it went away that month. And from that moment on, I, and I, I swear to you guys, I never hesitated from that moment on to make booking calls. They were no longer scary to me. Actually, it became kind of a fun game. And I built so much confidence in what I was doing and in what I had to offer that when I would get a no, which I still did, of course, I was like, what? <laughs> I was almost shocked when someone said no to me because I'm like, she doesn't know what she's saying no to. And like, does she know who I am? I don't think she does. <laughs> and so it, it became something normal and easy. And so all you need, all you need, you guys, is just 20 seconds of insane courage to just do the scary thing and pick up the phone that feels like it weighs 10,000 pounds and take 20 seconds to dial that first call. And once you make that first one, it really does turn into a game. The hardest part is just getting started. And in the process, you're going to gain confidence. You're going to master the skill. And it's going to be something that's no longer scary. And so there is a 100 nose check tracking sheet in your um, packet. It's much more beautiful than the one I used 10 years ago. But it's a tracking sheet with 100 little boxes that you can track your nose. Just in case that, that little reverse psychology um, activity helps you like it helped me. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is just creating a habit with booking um, and to always have bookings on your date book. Okay, so people come into Mary Kay for a multitude of reasons, but one common reason that's usually common for almost everyone is just to make an, a profit, to make an income, and to make some extra money, whether you want a lot or a little, that's usually a goal when you start a business is to make a profit. And so one way to do that and one way to really enjoy the income that you're making with Mary Kay and one way for it to feel consistent and, and to really feel the effect of making that extra money in Mary Kay is to hold <clears throat> at least one party a week. And one party a week, you can count on making money that week. You can count on um, cash coming in and you can count on that income, um, which is fun and exciting. And so holding one party a week is just pretty like average activity and kind of a baseline activity to do if you came in to Mary Kay with the intent to make money. One party a week. And then of course, the more that you do, the more successful and the quicker you move up and the more income that you make. So if you, if you wanna hold one party a week, that means you need to have at least eight booked for the month, booked for a 30 day time frame. And if you have eight booked, half of them will hold. So you'll hold four, which is essentially one party a week. Um, and so it's important to know that on the front end as a new consultant is that half of what you book is gonna hold, the other half is gonna cancel or reschedule. And it's a normal part of our business for things to cancel or reschedule, totally normal. And so you wanna always have eight on your date book. Um, if you want to have more than that, having 12 on your date book, you're going to hold about six. So you might hold one to two a week. And so uh, we actually have this program called Party Time 8 and Party Time 12. And it's a program that we promote in our area uh, to recognize women who have eight or 12 or more parties on their date book because it really does set you up to have a successful month and sets you up for success. Now we're gonna cover more details about the Party Time program in the fourth session. 
and there is a tracking sheet in your workbook to look at for the party time program. But I just wanted to mention that because it's a great way to keep track of your bookings and just make sure you're, you're on track to hold at least once uh, one party a week. Um, okay, so there are two things that need to happen to kind of make sure you, you're, you always have parties on your date book. And one is to book from your bookings. So when you go to a party, that party falls off your date book, but you're adding at least two or three or four more with the people that you book with when you're there. So that's one thing. And we are going to talk about that in this session. The second thing is just to have consistent booking habits. And what I mean by that, um, let me give you a couple of examples. Some of our consultants get one booking a day. Um, or they might make 10 calls a day. Or they might spend 15 minutes on their lunch break every day making booking calls. Or some people do like five by Friday. So there's a variety of different habits that you can have, but I think it's important to have like your own habit that you practice on a daily or weekly basis just to make sure you're maintaining those eight to 12 parties to hold one a week so that you have consistent income coming in from your business. Um, there's three main reasons people don't maybe um, have bookings on their date book or hold consistent parties. And one is just from a lack of planning. Like if you don't plan to do it, you're not going to do it. Um, second is just a lack of organization. And so what I would do is either have a binder or a notebook that you keep track of your stuff in or use the party time tracking sheet. Uh, but have some kind of organization system that you use that when it's time to book, you just pick up, pick up your, your notebook or your binder or your tracking sheet and you're ready to go. And you've got your names and numbers and a way to track what you've done. Okay, so stay organized. And then the third reason people don't uh, have bookings on their date book is just that it's a lack of priority. And so, you know, usually we have a to-do list that's like a mile long. And sometimes people treat bookings like, okay, well, if I get this, 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 and this done, then I'll make booking calls. And I don't know about you, but my long list usually doesn't get done in a day. So whatever is last is probably not going to happen. And so making it a priority or even making it an appointment in your date book. I mentioned, um, you know, maybe 15 minutes on your lunch break, or maybe you do an hour, two nights a week of booking. But set an appointment with yourself. The people who are successful in Mary Kay treat their Mary Kay business like, like a part-time job. And so you never not show up to work. You know, if you had a job, you wouldn't just not show up. And so treat your Mary Kay business like that. And if you set aside 15 minutes every day on your lunch break to make booking calls, show up, hold that appointment, treat it like a job, treat it like a business. When you treat Mary Kay like a business, it will pay you like a business. <clears throat> you treat it like a hobby, it will pay you like a hobby. And a lot of times hobbies actually cost you money. And so you want to make an income like this, so treat it like the business that it is, and it will pay you um, like, like a business can. Um, okay, so let's talk about booking your power start. So we talked about mindset. We talked about creating a habit. Let's move on to how to actually book a power start. And, and actually go into that. Let's talk about the 36 and 36 challenge because this is a kind of a fun challenge that we give to new consultants to do, and um, it can help you to book your power start. So let's talk about that first, and I am gonna pull up the tracking sheet so you guys can look at it here. Okay, so this is the um, workbook that we have. Let me get to the page where I can actually move it. Is that moving? Yes, maybe. Go to the next page. Okay. Yes. Okay. Great. Got to make sure we're doing the right thing here. Okay. So this is the workbook that we've got going on, and that's the title page. And then this is section one, which we're currently going over, which is booking, coaching, and profiling. There's a list here of everything in this section, and here are some questions that you're going to answer at the end. We'll talk a little bit more about those in a second. Here are the 100 no's uh, tracking sheet that you can use. And then here is the 36 and 36 challenge. And so this is um, 
a way to share the product. This is like your crash course in sharing Mary Kay products just with friends and family and coworkers and neighbors and anyone you run into. And all the samples that you need and products that you need came in your starter kit. And the goal is to share the products with 36 women in three to six days. So in kind of a short time frame, you're getting 36 women to try either the mascara, the satin hands, microdermabrasion, or lip gloss. You're having 10 women try mascara, 10 women try satin hands, six women try microdermabrasion because there's only six packets in your starter kit, and then 10 women try the lip gloss. And it's, 10, uh, it's 36 separate people. So 36 separate people are trying one of these four products. And so you have them try it. And, and really all you, all you have to say is like, hey, my director challenged me to get 36 people to try this product. And so um, have, them, have them choose one and then they sign the tracking sheet after they try it and then they check like it, love it, or want it. And for those three to six days only, they can get the promotion, the buy one, get one 25% off for satin hands. It's buy, uh, if they buy one satin hands, it's a $35 value they get for $29. Microdermabrasion, it's a $55 value they get for $49. And lip gloss is buy one, get one 25% off. And so they're signing the sheet and then deciding whether they want to purchase the product or not. And then while they're trying it, let me go back to me. Okay, I'm back on now. While they're trying it, um, it's a great opportunity to share your goal to, to hold a power start. And so it, you could say something as simple as, as this. You could say, okay, so we've got even more really great products I would love to share with you. And actually, I kind of need to get my practice in and learn and figure out what I'm doing here. So my director challenged me to hold my first six parties this month. You get a $10 gift card to spend just for letting me like bar your face and practice on you. And then you can earn uh, more free product if you want to share it with friends. So if you were interested in doing that, like what would work better for you, a weeknight or a weekend? Okay, so by you sharing the product with her, it's kind of your in to share a little bit more about your goals to hold the power to start. Okay, so let's go over um, the script, the power start script, as if you were calling someone to book her for a party for your power start. And let's go back to the packet because you guys can see the script uh, while I talk through it. Okay, so we're back in the packet here. And the scripts are all on one page that you need. And this is what you would say to friends and family and acquaintances. I mean, really just anyone who knows you. Now, it's ideal to, to do this in person. There's always um, better results and things are more powerful when done in person. But um, if you can't do it in person, you would be calling people to actually say some of the scripts that are on this page. And let me also mention now the contact list. There's a contact list in this packet right here. And start filling out this list with like literally everyone you know. Like everyone you know and can think of that knows your name and your face, write them down on this list. And don't prejudge and don't try to think like, oh, will she like Mary Kay or I don't think she will like Mary Kay. Just think of everyone you know and get them on this list because it gives you a really great place to start with to actually start contacting people to book your power start. Um, and don't just think close friends and family. I mean, think of like high school friends and college friends and the girl at the bank you see every time you go and deposit money and the girl who does your hair and the girl who does your nails and then the moms at the soccer field that you see when your kids are playing soccer or the women at church that you see every now and then. I mean, really think of an extensive list. Okay, let's go back up to the scripts. Okay, so you'll want to practice this a couple of times before you actually start making phone calls just so you're comfortable and familiar with it. And we give you scripts as a guide, um, not so that you're actually reading the words. You want to practice it enough and maybe even insert your own language that you would use in your own style so that it's, it's comfortable for you. These scripts were not intended that you would just like read them verbatim word for word on the phone. You want it to be a little bit more natural and comfortable than that. Oh, and by the way, let me actually define what a power start is. A power start is booking 12 parties 
to hold six within a 30 day time frame. So book 12 to hold six. Cause remember we talked about half canceling um, or rescheduling. That's usually what you're going to see. Now when booking with friends and family, you will probably hold more than six because these people love you and like they better not cancel on you. Right. And so you'll probably hold more than that, but the goal is to book 12 to hold six or, or maybe a couple more than that. And so let's go over the script. So you're calling your girlfriend, Brianna, and you call and say like, hey, Brianna, this is Leah. I'm calling for two reasons. Do you have a quick minute? Okay, so you wanna say I'm calling for two reasons to have a quick minute because saying two reasons, um, just to, uh, usually in somebody's mind, they're thinking, oh, what are those two reasons? Now, if you just ask like, well, hey, is this a good time for you? Most of the time people are gonna say no. Like, no, it's not a good time, call me back. And then it's harder to reconnect. And so like, hey, Brianna, this is Lee, I'm calling for two reasons, do you have a quick minute? Now, if you're leaving a voicemail, you would, you would say something similar. Like, hey girl, I'm calling for two reasons. It'll just be real quick, call me when you get a chance. You are more likely to get phone calls back when you say, I'm calling for two reasons. Okay, so if you're talking to her live, you would go on to say, Okay, so first of all, I got a little crazy and I decided to start a Mary Kay business and I've got this like goal that my director challenged me to do and it's to hold my first six parties in April just so I can get my practice in. So I thought of you because, you know, we haven't like connected in a while and I thought this would be a good reason to just reconnect and I would love to catch up and I would also love to just pay for you and share some of the Mary Kay products with you you actually get a $10 gift card just for letting me borrow your face and getting some practice in. Um, and you can earn more free stuff if you wanna bring friends. So I'm holding my Mary Kay appointments on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. What works best for you? Okay, so that's what you would say to a friend or an acquaintance. Now, if she agrees, if she's like, yeah, sure, no problem, would love to help, that sounds fun. Um, you want to turn that facial into a party. And so the way that you do that is to reemphasize the free product that she can earn when she has friends there. And, and so let's go on to this part of the script, turn the facial into a party. So you would go on to say, and actually let me back up. Let's back up. Let's reverse. Let's go back to the script with the power start. So you offer her Monday, Thursday, or Saturday, or another way to say this is like, Hey, what's better for you? Would it be a weeknight or a weekend? You want to give people options. Um, don't say what's good for you in May because that's way too many choices and when women have too many choices. It's harder to make a decision. And so you want to give two or three options. And so let's say she says, oh, you know what? The week is so busy for me. Let's do a Saturday. Then you would go on to say like, okay, I've got like a, uh, we could do a lunchtime appointment or something in the evening. What works better for you? So you keep offering her two options until you narrow it down to one. If you just say, what works for you in May? She's gonna say, ah, I don't know, I'm so busy, I'll call you back, okay? But if you give her options, she's gonna pick the option that works best for her. Okay, so then once you decide, okay, well, let's do this Saturday at two o'clock, then you turn the facial into a party and you say, okay, the thing about this is you can actually invite some of your friends. Um, when you have at least two women join you, you do receive more free products. And, and you guys, what I would do we're going to talk more about this in just a minute. I think a great Power Start hostess program is to offer her $10, uh, a $10 gift card just for getting together with you, and then a, an additional $10 gift card for every girlfriend she has over 18 attend with her, up to five. So she can earn up to um, the five, so she gets 50, so up, up to $60 in free product is what she can earn depending on how many people she has there. Now, when you get outside of your friends and family, I would probably change your hostess program, but this is a simple one that's easy, that you're giving away some free stuff to make it an, an incentive, but not a ton. And I think it's a good one to start with. But there are other options out there, and, and really it's up to each individual consultant to pick the hostess program she thinks is gonna work for her, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. So you say a fun thing is you can bring your girlfriends. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about having inviting some friends? It's really fun and we can make it a fun like campering session or girls night in. Okay, so you turn the facial into a party. 
And then when she agrees to do that, you start the initial coaching to get the guest list. Okay, initial coaching. So remember, this is booking, coaching, and pre-profiling. So let's talk about coaching. You guys, coaching is, is really just a, a lot about communication. And you communicating your expectations and making sure she knows what to expect to have a successful and fun get-together. And so it's a lot about communication, and there are some really important things in coaching, and one of them is getting a guest list. And the reason we get a guest list is so we can make sure that people are invite, invited in a timely way and, and invited effectively. Sometimes when we don't do the inviting, sometimes she just forgets. She forgets to invite people, and then all of a sudden it's two days before the party, and she's like, oh, crap, I forgot to invite people. And then she calls you and cancels because nobody can come. When she, if she would have invited people more effectively, or if you would have done that, you know, two weeks before, you would have had a couple people come. And so that's why we take care of the guest list. And so here's how you say that. You say, okay, so I'm really excited. You know, thank you for su your support with this, this goal that I have. Um, I just want to do all the work so you don't have to worry about it. Um, all I need from you is a list of girlfriends you want to invite. And I actually have really cute invitations that I'll send to them. And then um, you can earn, and this is another thing, this is another part where you, you're going to customize this for yourself. Some people do offer incentives for having a certain number of friends over 18. Or if you just do the $10 for every person, this is where you can share with her like, okay, you're gonna get $10 for every person that shows up. So if you wanna max that out, you probably need to invite about 15 to 20 people to have five people show up to max out the free product that you can get, okay? So you're gonna tweak that part of the script depending on what hostess program that you're using, okay? So you wanna mention that like, hey, if you have this many people show up, you're going to max out your, your hostess credit you can earn, but you need to invite about 15 to 20 people. And, and you do need to tell people that because if she thinks she wants to have five people there, sometimes they think like, okay, I'll invite these five people I want to have come. But we know that, of course, they're not all going to be able to come. So to expect four to five, she needs to invite 15 to 20. Okay, so you mentioned that about the guest list, and that's, all she has to do is get together a list of girlfriends she wants to invite. And then the next thing we do is we'll, we'll follow up the next day or follow up tomorrow and just confirm, make sure the date and time is good for you. And I'll get a list of your girlfriends so I can get invitations ready to send to them. Now you go ahead and still call them and invite them, but I'll just send them a cute invitation that has all the details. So to follow up tomorrow, like would afternoon or evening work better for you? And so you're setting up that time to, to talk to her the next day to get her list of girlfriends and to just confirm the date and the time and make sure she's good to go with that. Okay, so let's move on to the confirmation call 24 hours later. You wanna confirm the date and then get her guest list. And sometimes people will have a list ready and they'll read it off to you, but more often people will wanna text their list of girlfriends with um, the cell phone number for, for that friend. And let's talk a little bit about that. You know, some people, and especially friends and family, they'll have no problem giving you, you know, a guest list for, for you to contact. But then sometimes people don't want to do that or they're hesitant to do that. And so let me talk about some other options you can do if you feel like someone's hesitating or maybe not wanting you to give out their um, friends' names and numbers. So you could create a Facebook event and just have her add people to the event that she wants to invite. And then you can message those people and post information in that Facebook event. Now, I wouldn't just rely on that, but it's another way that you can make sure people are getting invited and getting the invitation. Um, another thing that I think is important is just to have the hostess call and text people that she wants to come. You know, her invitation is going to be, you know, a lot more powerful than yours but you still want to take action to make sure people are getting invited. Another thing that you can do is to create like a 30 second video of, of you just saying like, Hey, this is Leah. I'm, I'm doing um, Emily's party on Saturday. And I just wanted to call and introduce myself just so you can see that I'm like a real person. And so we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to do facials and makeup. We're going to come a little bit early. We're going to do a hand treatment. And then I've got a goodie bag of samples for you. Um, so when you leave, you can take some more products home with you. So we hope you can make it and just wanted to leave this video to introduce myself. 
Okay, so a 30 second video that you're gonna send to the hostess that her that then that hostess can send that out or text that out to her friends as a way to invite them to the party and for them to just see you and, and to see that you're a real person and to hear a few details about the party, it helps to create some excitement for them coming. Okay, so let's say you actually get the guest list from, from your friends you want to call to pre-profile and it's fine to just leave a voicemail because you're gonna get mainly voicemail anyways. And so here's what you would say on like a pre-profiling voicemail. And by the way, pre-profiling is calling guests to let them know what's gonna happen to create some excitement for people actually coming. And it helps you to find out um, who's coming, what type of skin they have, what products they're interested in, what type of foundation they're interested in. So it helps you to come more prepared and to come with products to share that, that, that you know people are actually going to want to try. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to parties and people have actually said like, well, I wasn't really planning on coming, but then I got the call from you and it just sounded like a lot of fun. Or then I got your voicemail and it just sounded like really exciting, so I wanted to come. Okay, so this pre-profiling voicemail does go a long way in actually having people show up for it. And so here, here's an example of what you would say, like, hey, Sally, this is Leah. Um, hey, I'm friends with Jane Doe or whoever your hostess is, and I'm the Mary Kay lady doing Jane's party on Friday. And so I just wanted to call and introduce myself and ask a few questions about your skin and makeup preferences so I can come really prepared. Um, so we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be super chill, relaxing night in. We're going to do a satin hands treatment about 10 minutes before the party starts, and then I, I'm I'm gonna bring a goodie bag of samples for everyone who comes and I'll send you home with that. So can't, you know, can't wait to meet you on Friday night. And so when I leave that voicemail, I actually do send a follow-up text just to let her know I left a voicemail. And that text would say, you know, hey, so-and-so, this is Leah, I'm friends with so-and-so. Um, I just left you a quick voicemail about, you know, Sally's party on Friday. Um, listen to it, let me know what you think. And then if she responds like, oh, cool, you know, I'm going to come, I'll be there. Then you can pre-profile her and ask her what type of skin she has, what kind of foundation preference she has, and a few more questions that we're actually going to go over in another section. Okay? And so then let me go back to the video here. Okay, so that's coaching and pre-profiling. And then the other thing you want to do when you call the next day, okay, so remember how you call the next day to confirm the date and the time and get her guest list. There's a couple other things you want to talk about, and mainly involving just preparation for the party. Um, it is ideal to have the food at the end. That's ideal. Now, it doesn't always work out like that, but that's what you're going to try to make happen is to have maybe just drinks when people arrive and then snacks at the end. Because what can happen when the food is there in the beginning, um, first of all, it just gets kind of messy when people are trying to eat and do their facial at the table and get food at the same time. It gets messy and you start to get behind because if there's a table filled with yummy food in the kitchen and the party is happening in the living room, people don't want to leave the table with yummy food. They want to hang around in the kitchen and eat the food. And so it, it can be kind of a distraction in the beginning. And again, it gets kind of messy to eat and do the facial at the same time. And then you kind of want to give people a reason to hang out and mingle afterwards. Because this can be a really fun part of the party is when everyone's got their face on and they're feeling beautiful and they've got their makeover done. Um, then it's just their time to hang out with their girlfriends. And then you're going to meet with everyone individually afterwards. And food just gives them a reason uh, to stay and to kind of mingle and socialize with their friends afterwards. So that's ideal. And so you want to communicate that to your hostess and just say like, hey, you know, sometimes it works better when we save food till the end. And so feel free to like offer drinks as people arrive. And then afterwards we get the snacks out and just keep it simple. And that will give everybody a chance to mingle and then I'll have a chance to meet with everyone too. Okay, so you want to leave food to the end. And then the other thing you do want to mention is, is children. Now, in some groups of people you're going to be in, it's going to be a non-issue. You know, college students don't usually have kids that, that would be coming to the party. And maybe if you're in an older group, they're not going to be bringing small kids. But a lot of times we're with moms with kids. And so you do want to mention that to say, like, you know, hey, do you have a lot of friends who, um, who have kids? And if so, like, what do you think about making this, like, a fun girls' night where they can, like, leave the kids for the night? and just have, have some fun and um, get some pampering. Like, do you think your friends would be up for that? 
So this is kind of a sensitive topic. You don't want to say like, make sure nobody brings any kids. Because <laughs> this is a, a company built on faith first, family second, and career third. So we love the families, we love the kids. And so I would approach it a little bit softer of like, hey, do your friends have kids? What do you think about making this a fun girls' night out so they can relax and get pampered and uh, you know get a babysitter or leave the kids home with dad? Um, I think that you sell $100 less for every small child that's running around the table um, because it's just a distraction. And women aren't able to relax as much, and they're not really paying attention as much. And so if at all possible, make it a fun girls' night out for the women who are going to be coming. Um, okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about with coaching is about text booking because you can book parties from just texting people versus making a live phone call. And that can be very, very effective. But once you get to the point in the text where you've actually picked a date with her and she, you know she's interested and you've got a date set, you do want to confirm and coach her live on the phone. I think uh, some people who just try to communicate everything on text um, don't always set up a very successful or effective party because Sometimes you just need to talk to people live and on the phone. And so you want to say, okay, hey, the next thing we need to do is just call uh, or connect the next day so I can confirm this and ask you a couple of questions about your skin and your makeup preferences so I can come prepared. So what works better for you like tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow evening? And then you're setting up a time to actually have a phone call with her on the phone. Um, primarily for your own like safety, Let's make sure it's like a real person and not like some creepy dude. <laughs> okay, so that's number one. And then also, the more the more effective communication you can have with someone, the better the party's going to turn out, and uh, it's better to do that live and on the phone. Okay, and then the other thing I wanted to mention that I'm not going to train on today, but I just want to mention it because it's awesome, is a 20, 21 day being challenged. This is kind of a new thing that's gone viral in the Mary Kay world is doing a 21 day booking challenge. And this, there's a video and resources, which are scripts you can use on leahlaughlin.com in the education section in the, um, when you click on booking, you'll see a video called the 21 day challenge and then you'll see the scripts that you can use. And this could be really great if you're just wanting to have a powerful month or just get into the habit. Basically, the goal is to contact 10 people a day for 21 days. And it gives you all the scripts to use for those 21 days. And it's a really effective challenge and system for tracking it. Okay, so I'm not going to train on it right now. But I'm going to lead you to where you can find information if you're interested in, in this challenge. Okay, so... We talked about the hostess program for your power start where you offer the 10 for her and then 10 for every additional friend. Then it, it, the one I would recommend switching to is just offering a little bit more incentive. And we are actually going to talk about that in session number two. Okay, so I wanted to mention it, but we'll go over more details um, in the next section. And then the last thing I wanted to close with to wrap this up, you guys, is just booking from your bookings. And if there were one skill that I would place the most value on in your Mary Kay business for you to learn and master, it's booking from your bookings. Um, for so, so, so many reasons, this makes you so effective and it saves you time and it creates stronger parties versus trying to drum up all this new business by calling, 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 calling people. And there's a group of six women you book two or three future parties with those women that you meet there. And the parties are stronger. The hostesses are more excited. You can get a guest list on the spot versus calling to follow up. And it just makes things so much more effective. Okay, so if there's one skill that I would place the most value on, it is bookings from bookings. And so master this skill in the beginning, and you're going to be freaking unstoppable. So let's talk about how to do that. And it really starts at the very, very beginning of the party where you're going to mention the second appointment that they have the option to do. And in session number two, we do go over the flip chart. And the flip chart is your script that you can use throughout the entire party. So the script I'm going to go over briefly is in the flip chart. So you will have this, you will have this on, on paper that you can print off and practice. 
And so it starts in the beginning, and one of the first things you do in the opening of the party is to say, this is the, this is the first of two appointments that you're entitled to as a Mary Kay um, customer. And so at this first appointment that you're at, you guys are just going to do like the very, very basics just for the sake of time. Um, and also you're going to try just a quick dash out the door look. And so it's a, it's a quick, easy look that you can apply in two minutes or less, and it's going to brighten up your eyes, and you're going to look great, I promise. Um, but it's not a full customized look that our hostess is getting. Um, that's one of the hostess perks is that she gets a customized look she gets to try. You're going to teach her to use the brush set and to apply her makeup with brushes, which is a lot different than trying to use your fingers or use sponge, sponge tip applicators. And then your hostess gets to try other things like microdermabrasion and a couple more skincare products. And then, of course, she gets a lot of free product for being the hostess. And so you're mentioning that up front. It's option to do a second appointment too and get all the hostess perks because today, you know, you're not doing a whole lot, at least with color. As you say that in the beginning, and then the goal is to say second appointment like seven to ten times. You want them to be very familiar with what the second appointment even is. You can't just mention them, mention it once because they won't remember what that is. And so you can play a game called pass the eyeliner um, or pass the pencil and you have an eyeliner that every time you say the word follow-up appointment or second appointment, they have to pass that eyeliner to the next person. And then uh, what that does is it, it actually, they start to try to remind you to say second appointment so they can get the eyeliner passed to them. And then throughout the flip chart, the flip chart does prompt you to sit in and say the word second appointment like seven to 10 times so that people are just familiar with the concept. And when you can do that well, when you go into the individual consultation, it's time to book her for her follow-up follow appointment. It just works uh, very beautifully. I remember the first time I tried this concept, a new consultant, and, and I didn't, honestly, I didn't think it would work. And, but I, I just trusted the process and just did what my director told me to do. And so I played that little game and I talked a lot about the second appointment. And then when I went to the individual consultations to book people, there were, a, first of all, I booked everything. And then there were a couple of people who mentioned, mentioned it even before I did. They were like, okay, so this second appointment, like, I want to try this and this and this. And, you know, can we do a full day? They were asking me about it before I even had a chance to, to mention it. Okay, so this can be really effective. And so you're mentioning follow-up appointment. And then at the very end of the party, you're using a party sheet to close the party. It goes through eight questions just to wrap everything up. And then the party sheet is in the packet, the new consultant training packet or workbook. And so you're asking those questions. And one, I think it's question number three. You actually play deal or no deal. And there's these little uh, labels you can print with a little TV show. Um, and then you just get envelopes. And then each side of every envelope, there's just a little card that mentions a product that they can get for free. And so you say, okay, we're going to play this fun little game, deal or no deal. And how this works is everybody gets an envelope. And inside each envelope, there is a free product that you can get. It can be all yours. And so I'm going to pass out these envelopes, and here's how it works. This is deal or no deal. So you're going to actually say deal or, or you're going to choose deal or no deal. And if you're a deal, what that means is that, like, you're super excited about your second appointment, and actually you want to invite some friends because you want to get the same free stuff that your host is. And, yeah, you're, you're ready, you're on, let's do it, deal. No deal is like, eh, nope, not, not interested at all. Okay, so you're either deal or no deal. And if you're deal, you get to look inside your envelope and see what you get for free, and I'm going to bring that product for you at your second appointment. If you're a no deal, you don't get to look, okay? So no cheating. You can't look inside. You might be passing up a free car. You never know. No, they're not. But um, you pass out an envelope to every single person, and then you want to actually go around and ask each person deal or no deal. And you don't want to be repetitive. You kind of want to keep saying, like, this is no deal. Because by this time, the party's almost over and people aren't listening as well as they were in the beginning. And so you want to be repetitive with it, pass it out, and then you go around and you say, okay, Emily, deal or no deal? And if she says deal, you want to celebrate it. And you, like, start clapping and have cheer for Emily. 
If she says no deal, you prompt everybody to say, everyone to say, aw, and you have everyone say it like aw, because you don't want it to be awkward if she is, is no deal, so you just kind of make it funny. Okay, so, and then she's circling deal or no deal on her actual paper. Okay, then individual consultation. And we're gonna wrap it up with this. And so the individual consultation, I wanna pull this up so you can kind of know what I'm referring to. <clears throat> okay, present to everyone. Okay, you guys should be able to see this now. So let's go, here's your contact list you can fill out by the way. This is your challenge for this, this section. So here's the individual consultation. And there are several different parts to this, but the only thing we're gonna go over right now is how to book the, the follow-up appointment. And so regardless of whether she circled deal or no deal or said deal or no deal, you still want to attempt to book her. Because you guys, I promise you, not everyone's paying attention or knows what they were saying no to. Okay, so, um, and, and use your intuition and judgment. You can tell when people are just like, eh, not interested. But you still want to try to attempt to, to book her regardless of whether she actually circled deal or no deal on her on her sheet. So, so yeah, here's what you say. You say, okay, so for your second appointment, now she knows what this is because you've said it a lot. You've already talked about it a lot with your flip chart. You say, okay, so for your second appointment, I've got Thursdays and Saturdays available. Or you might say, like, I do some weeknights and some weekends. You sort of insert your preferred days to hold parties. And you say, I've got this available. What works best for you? Um, what works before you? Oh, my gosh. I just found a typo. <laughs> we'll fix that. Um, you, say, you don't say what works before you. You say what works better for you or what works best for you. And then you go on to say, like, I would love to put a customized look together for you and just teach you how to apply it. Okay, so then if she says yes, you select a day or time within the next two weeks, giving her two options. So you say, okay, so is Thursday or Saturday better? Okay, if you want to do a Saturday, is it lunchtime or evening time that would work better? Okay, so you keep giving her two options till you narrow it down to one. And then you, at that point, once you narrow down the date, you go over your hostess program. We'll cover more of that in the next session. And then you start to coach her. And the way that you coach her is you want to get the guest list. Now, one, one game that you play at every party is called the Fabulous Friends game. So she may already have a list of people going from the Fabulous Friends game. If not, you just prompt her to start writing friends' names down, and you actually use the Fabulous Friends game, the 20 spaces for that game, as her guest list. Then you set up a time the next day to confirm. Even if the party's three weeks from now, you still set up a time the very next day to confirm it and to finalize or get her guest list depending on where she's at with the fabulous friends game now if she is a no if she's a no and she just is not interested in a second appointment that's totally fine you don't want to push her if people don't want to get together with you you don't push them to get together with you um, but one thing you can do is attempt to book her as a guest to your meeting to be in your model portfolio and there is some alarm going off in my house right now, and I'm not sure what it is. So we're, we're just going to ignore that. Um, so if she's like, no, you know, I'm not interested. You say, okay, that's totally fine. Well, hey, like, what do you think about this? I would actually love to feature you in my model portfolio. Um, I go to makeup workshops on Tuesday nights and Saturday mornings. Like, it's a super fun, fun girls' night. I would love to have you there. You get a facial and a makeover, and we do a before and after picture. Would a Tuesday night or a Saturday morning work better? Now, one thing we haven't covered is that you, you're actually inviting people already during the party, so she's going to know what you're talking about. This is a part of the flip chart script that you would actually go over earlier. You're just kind of re-inviting her. Okay, so that is booking from your bookings. Let me go back to the video. <clears throat> um, and that's, that's essentially how you book second appointments when you're at a party because you want to leave every party with at least two bookings on your date book for the future. But it's all about, it is just all about how you set it up in the beginning. And it's all about saying from the very beginning that they have, they're entitled to and they have the option to have a second appointment. And it's just about that repetition of talking about the second appointment. So when they're familiar with what that is, then when you're meeting with her one-on-one, -on -one, it's a very simple process to nail down a date and a time for her second appointment because she's familiar with that. And deal or no deal also helps you to narrow down who is interested in getting together with you again. 
Um, okay, so to close out here, you guys, your challenge for this booking section is to create a contact list of at least 50 or more people. And I'm sure you've got your Facebook friends and you've got your contact list in your phone, but pull out those people from those places and just put it on a piece of paper all in one spot. It's going to help you to start booking and um, setting up your power start. So make your contact list. And then when you complete all four of these sessions and all your little challenges, and you answer all the questions on the title page of the workbooks, you do earn a very, very beautiful Mary Kate pendant necklace that I'm actually going to show you in um, the next video or two. So, okay, that wraps up our first session, you guys. I'll see you next time.